All right, so Colin Nathan, you're leaving tomorrow. Uh, excited about going to Russia with Rena Liebenberg? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, went for my 13th COVID test this morning. That's been crazy, right? Yeah. Um, very excited about going, starting to pack tonight, and then au revoir tomorrow. I think I've actually been there for like half of those COVID tests. So they, they, yeah. they it's, it's too much, right? Eh? Dude, we did like five tests in two weeks. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And then we got nailed at the airport. Yeah. Because we weren't allowed to go into Germany. Remember, it was like 48 hours, not 70 yes. soon. We missed the deadline by a few hours. And then, yeah, it was just crazy. It was crazy. Crazy times, man. Yeah, fun times. Fun times indeed to have all those COVID tests and all the stress. And uh, it's, Sorry, hold on. Firstly, Viva. Viva. Yeah, 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 yeah. we didn't do that. I thought, I, was, I, thought, I, thought I might sneak it in and not get you to not do it. But yeah, we got there. We got there. Yeah, we got there, yeah. So Russia, right? Uh, Russia. Have you, have you taken a fight to Russia before? Never. Um, but looking forward to going. It's my first time to Russia. So yeah, just another country on, on the bucket list that I've always wanted to box in. You know? So looking forward to that. I think it's a fun fight. You know, yeah. I think it's a really fun fight. Both guys are vulnerable defensively. Um, Reyna's actually been tightened, has tightened up on his defense as he's become a veteran of the sport, yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Um, his defense was obviously impeccable against Rowan, and he fought a brilliant fight. And funny enough, um, Chidanov's got a very similar style to Rowan, except I think Rowan's a little bit more fluid in terms of him dipping side to side with that bob and weave. He hits a lot harder than Rowan, and obviously he's fought at world-class level and been a world champ. So it's a tough fight, but I also think it's a fun fight for the fans. And, you know, Reno's really up for it. It's a great opportunity, a great platform, and uh, we're ready to rumble and, and rock and roll. Well, Reno, as you said, has been all around the world, but needs that win overseas, doesn't he? Yes, and that's kind of the reason why we're in this position. Um, we, as a camp, obviously want this to be his last fight, but we want him to go out uh, and win. And should he win, which I'm confident of him doing so, he can retire as a WBA interim world champion, which I'm very proud of. Right. Cause but I mean, irrespective, I'm just proud of his career. I mean, the guy's just been, he's worn his heart on his sleeve in the ring. He's never been in a dull crap fight. And uh, just an absolute credit. And I'm telling you straight up, South African boxing is going to miss his character because he is just a character of night. Yeah, I, I, I guess kind of from my side, I hope it is in his last fight, but it is probably for, in his best interests uh, on, your, on your behalf to maybe... Let's have a look at the results. Okay, yeah, look at the results. I mean, if, he, if it's a good performance and, you know, you know he uh, d dominates and comes out unscathed and, you know, we can reassess. But obviously, he's a family man. Um, I was inspiring with his wife this week and, you know, I asked the question and she was like, yeah, you know, I think it's time. But let's see, you know, he's healthy, he's, he's you know, he's fresh at 37 and he showed that in his last fight so let, let's see i'm just very very excited about this fight in russia back on the road with reno liebenberg paul and of course yeah, Neil. all the characters all the characters yeah. yeah i mean they've been beside reno since the beginning i mean reno and i've been together for over a decade and he's family to me i love him to bits uh we're friends outside of this crazy sport and uh it's just been an absolute credit to south african boxing well, let's, let's put it this way. It's not going to be a 17-day trip. Apparently, it's only a seven-day trip. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that was just crazy. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I could even... I'm not sure I could... Cheers, bro. I'll see you soon. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I could even do that again. Like, honestly, you know? Yeah. And don't forget, we've got Azinga Fazili fighting in, in Vegas this week. Well, well, that's where I'm going next because it's hot news. Azinga Fazili looking in good shape, looking ready to take on, on Martin Ward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's with my partner now, Sean Gibbons, and uh, obviously this fight was put together with uh, No Doubt Management and, and Matchroom. And uh, big shout out to Rumble Africa Promotions as well. Terrace is there. I believe Chief is on his way, so I'm looking forward to the, the two of them being together. Um, I want to make this clear, yo. Seriously, I do not control the US Embassy visa situation. I mean, I was reading a lot of the stuff in the MDA that it was me and, I mean, did you, you obviously read all that stuff. You're obviously right? the president of the country as well. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was like, I was just, you know, yeah. trying the popcorn and reading the comments and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. But I'm glad it's all sorted. Um, Azinga looks in fantastic shape. So Viva South Africa. Uh, big plans for him should he win. I'm confident of him winning. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy, but if you ask me... What do I think? I think Azinga's got the ability to outpoint him. You're looking at maybe 10 rounds to two, nine rounds to three, maybe even force a stoppage. Depending, I don't know how his camp went. Obviously, I put the fight together from a management perspective and made sure everything was on track. And I know he's been looked after well in America by Sean Gibbons, so big shout out to him. And I just think this is a, his big moment. You know, we fought hard for this position. Went to America twice for him to fight for this. So. There's a, there's a lot of uh, expectation for the weekend. 
and then obviously with Reyna the following week as well. So what happens next? I mean, does it, it is an eliminator for the RBF? Does, does he fight uh, the winner of Rocky Mob versus Ogawa? Ogawa, correct. So we got we got to wait for that. But first things first, he's got to beat right. Ward first, and then obviously we'll we'll assess. I believe it's four to six months. Should he win, become mandatory? Which is a little different to Steven Onchinga because um, Alvarado just did his mandatory. He's got a voluntary, yeah. He's got to do a voluntary in IBF rule. So, so I think he's in a very strong position should he win this fight. Right, I'm not going to ask you about Onchinga because that's more probably Rumble's uh, question for, for me to ask uh, uh, what, what happens with him. He's going to have to wait. Uh, you can ask me. I put their fight together with Araneta. Okay. So, um, yeah, he's going to have to wait. The, he has to play the, the waiting game now. You know, um, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see when the fight's going to take place. And let's just, let's just see. Okay, let me take you back to last weekend then. A recent news, Hecky Butler returns, uh, head of Ormorant's easy work, work kind of in a way. And then uh, Tristan Trutz is showing improvements in, in, in his game. Yeah, so, so Tristan, we might move up to middleweight. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I think he looked miserable pulling weight the last week. Uh, he just, you know, wasn't happy. And he's a young kid growing at the age of 21. So maybe we should move him up. He's definitely got the frame and the limbs to move up to middleweight. Hits hard as well. So that's a possibility. Hedda, I just think she's head and shoulders above every single female in South Africa. Uh, she's 6 and 0 now for a reason. And, and it's going to be hard to get her any local opponents. We've spoken to a few girls, no names mentioned, and they've always turned us down. I understand why. She's, a, she's an absolute beast. And for South African boxing, I don't think that anyone can match her right now. So the plan is to either take her abroad or to import uh, an international fighter for her but you know I, I still think the world of ability and I think this fight obviously was to get her back in the ring to get some sort of momentum and I think she achieved that and she just she's just so strong and she was really good on the timing and the counter punches yeah, and then Hecky last week, you know. Yeah, Hecky. So yeah, I mean that's that's my signature fight, isn't it? Yeah. So I was really impressed. The first four rounds, you could see his timing was a little bit off, yeah. um, but particularly the championship rounds, the last four rounds, he showed tremendous legs, tremendous legs. Um, ultimate, I'm I'm saying came to really really bring it. Um, it was the kind of fight, like I said to you in the post fight interview, that we really needed. Um, the situation now is is we've been offered a fight which makes no sense. So now it would be a situation of maybe having a fight now and then obviously fighting Shiro. I like the look of Edwin Soto. I saw him against uh, Takiyama. I think he's very beatable. Strong kid, very game. But a guy like Keki who gives him angles, he's going to struggle with that kind of style. So let's, yeah, I think, I think we've got some really good some options now. Heki's number two in the BC, which is really, really good for him. Uh, he was number three, he, you know, now the fact that he's had this fight behind him and he's, we've got this momentum going. I think, I think the future's great for him and I still think he's got a legitimate title run in him and I still think that he can win a legitimate championship. So let's, let's see in the next couple of months what the situation is. I'm going to ask this question because it's going to be pushed on social media. Uh, Some Pui obviously didn't fight. Yeah. Um, is there plans for him? Yes, we're looking at, please God, pressing him back in for September. Um, we got to take some sort of responsibility with Tanzania and I have to take a bit of responsibility for that. Uh, we were so stressed at one stage about the Filipinos getting on a flight and getting onto a plane coming to South Africa that we kind of overlooked the undercard fights and, and I've got to take some sort of responsibility for that so I have to apologize. But it's one of those things. Again, a guy gets on a, on, on a, on a plane coming to fight at a certain weight category and he's just so grossly overweight. It's just pathetic. But I need to also make reference to, we were given a video of a guy standing on a scale and the scale was rigged and we fell for it. So that's why I'm saying I've got to harbor some of this responsibility. So, but obviously we're looking at bringing him back in September, um, maybe even against a local opponent, which will probably be a little bit more reliable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still think, I mean, you look at his form in the German, how he performed and, and he's still sharp. And again, I still also think he's got another legitimate title run in him. So that's obviously what we're going to be aiming towards. Right, and outside of the, the guys that we mentioned, is there any other fight news coming through? Um, he, Tariq Alali comes from Morocco mid-June. Um, Ishmael Abdullah come on the 9th of June. Um, looking forward to them coming. And then obviously now start focusing on the four-rounders, like I said to you in the previous interview we did. 
you know, I've got to get Caden Trutter moving, I've got to get Kachlecho moving. Those are kids who've shown a lot of form in the gym and they've been coming consistently. Yeah. And they are the next gen of South African and African boxing, so we've got to start getting them moving. And then um, there's obviously some other business projects that I'm busy working on, uh, which I told you before. I'm now getting closer to what I need to do. Had some very high level meetings uh, with some very influential people and, and some networks. So it's going well, it's going smoothly and I'm looking forward to uh, the future. I'm very amped about the future. Thank God. I mean, last year we were like twiddling our thumbs, doing these like shows, um, yeah. the lockdown and stuff. And now we're busy. So I'm doing a lot of work behind my laptop, uh, also on the floor and with the fighters. So I'm very, very um, amped about the future. And I'm very, very excited about Azinga and very excited about Reina Liebenberg. All right, thanks for keeping us posted until next time, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. You're a good, great senior, and you're always welcome in the gym, you know that. Shate, thank you very much.